Hey guys, it's Clay, CPAP My Way, CPAPMyWay.com. Today I am here to discuss the Air Curve 11 clinical or provider settings. As always in these videos, this is made mainly for the clinical people that follow us uh, so that we can forward this along to them. If you don't know what you're doing, don't go in here and start adjusting things without a doctor helping you. Some of these settings are actually pretty intricate on the uh, buy level here. So um, I'm gonna run through all of them, what they mean, and um, how to adjust them. So let's jump right in. As always, if you appreciate the info, I appreciate the thumbs up, comment with any questions or expansions you think I need to throw in there. And there'll be a link to this uh, blog in the description so that you can actually read through the different settings and understand them fully. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is just go over how to access the menu. So what you'll do to access it is press and hold both of these icons here on the front, the blue one and the purple one. You'll notice the screen change, you'll see clinical home. Now you're gonna press settings and you're going to be in the uh, therapy settings or provider mode now. If you don't know what you're doing, please don't adjust any of this stuff. Let's start off just with mode here. It can be in CPAP mode, which would completely defeat the purpose of having a buy level. S mode, which is a fixed pressure buy level or a auto buy level mode, which is labeled V auto. For the sake of just simplicity, we'll start off in S just to show you those settings. You've got it in S mode uh, as far as the therapy settings go in uh, the pressure settings. You've got IPAP and EPAP. That is your inhalation pressure and your exhalation pressure. It also gives you the option of turning easy breathe on or off. That's a comfort feature to just help somebody, especially a new user. It's, uh, it's nice to have the easy breathe on. The rest of the settings are the same in V auto. So I'm actually going to jump up back up to the mode and change it to V auto. This is your auto buy level mode. This is where you're actually gonna set up a range. When it says mode V auto, you're gonna see max IPAP, min EPAP. Then you've got pressure support. Pressure support is gonna be the difference between your IPAP and EPAP. So while this is going to be a minimum exhalation pressure of four and a maximum inhalation pressure of 25, no matter where it is in that range, the IPAP and the EPAP will never be more than four centimeters apart at that setting. Your pressure support can go as low as zero or as high as 10. Of course, if it's zero, that's just a CPAP, right? It's a uh, fixed pressure. And pretty much honestly, all the way up to three is a CPAP if uh, you really include the flex part of the CPAP options in CPAP machines. Once you get to four, you're really more in a buy level and it can go as high as 10, right? Depending on what you're trying to do with this device. The next thing you're going to see here is TI range. TI range is the range of inspiratory time limits to accommodate individual respiratory conditions. So uh, the TI max would limit the inspiration time for patients who require like a longer uh, expiration time. And the TI minimum prevents the premature cycling to EPAP for patients whose inspiratory pressure is extremely weak. It comes factory set at uh, 0.3 seconds to two seconds. You could adjust it between one to four. So you could set a minimum of one, max of three if you wanted to, and it would go from uh, one to three on that. One thing that is interesting is if you do that, it's you can't get back to the 0.3 seconds that comes in the factory settings from what I can tell. So to get back to those settings, you actually have to go all the way down here and restore the default settings. Now, keep in mind, when you do this, it does change all the settings back to the default um, factory settings. But now when you go back up, you'll notice uh, you'll notice for one, um, your standard V auto settings will be in there and your TI range will be back to 0.3 to 2 seconds, which is, I mean, I've never really seen anybody change it, to be honest with you. I'm sure some pulmonary doctors out there could definitely explain why you'd want to change that, but that is where you would change it. Next on the menu here is the trigger. Trigger is the sensitivity setting that tells the device to switch from your exhalation pressure to inhalation pressure. It's adjustable from uh, very low all the way up to very high. And obviously very low would be low sensitivity, very high would be high sensitivity. Seems like most people do just fine on the medium. In fact, I haven't really seen many cases where anybody's uh, ordered us to change that. Next on the menu is cycle. Cycle is the opposite of trigger. That's the sensitivity that tells the device to switch from IPAP to EPAP for exhalation. 
That setting additionally is adjustable from very low to very high, obviously low being the uh, least sensitive, very high being very sensitive and quick to switch the, uh, the pressure setting. Now you're down into the comfort setting. So you've got uh, ramp time, which you would set from off to 45. Customer typically can actually adjust that on their own as long as you give them permission. The uh, starting EPAP is what pressure uh, the EPAP will start at during the ramp cycle. So typically, in most cases I've seen, you want your EPAP starting pressure to be half of what your minimum EPAP is for comfort. Um, but obviously, you know, set it to whatever you think is right for the, uh, for the customer. Humidity level is adjustable from off to eight, but obviously that can be adjusted by the um, customer as well. Mask setting, pillows to nasal, tube can be uh, slimline, standard, or three meters, I guess. I, I don't know what that actually stands for, to be honest. Bacteria filter, this BV filter, uh, bacteria or viral filter. If you use one of those little filters, I'll put an image up here for you so you can see it. Um, you will want to tell the machine that you've put one of those filters in line so that it can account for it. 99% chance that you're not using a bacteria filter. You will know if you are. I always change the patient view to advanced because I like giving people the freedom to see as much information as possible. So if you switch it to advanced, they'll be able to see a lot more on their, um, on their reporting on screen here. Smart start and smart stop are obvious. Smart start allows the machine to turn on by itself when it senses the breathing. Smart stop tells the machine to turn off when it senses you stop breathing. I'm very cautious on these 11 devices on the smart stop. It's pretty darn sensitive. So if you get a big leak, I've heard of it accidentally shutting the machine down mid therapy. Of course, once it senses you're breathing, it kicks right back on, but it's a weird feeling that can happen in the middle of the night. So unless you really feel like you need the smart stop, I'd leave that turned off. Uh, care check-in is the new feature that's available on AirSense 11, helps uh, give good information to the patient based on their data to help them along the way adjusting to the machine. Language English, time zone, temperature, you could jump to Celsius if you wanted to. And then we did demo the re uh, restore defaults. Erase data. If you, oh, I hit the wrong. If you want to completely reset this device uh, and have it ready from one patient to another patient, maybe it was a rental and it came back in, you would erase all data and it will erase all of the compliance and therapy data from the previous user and allow you to put it out on a new user. All right. And then the last thing on here is your about, tells you a little bit about the machine and uh, whether the modem's working and all that good stuff, not something you're gonna look at too often. Once you've made all those changes, hit the home button up in the top and exit your clinical menu. Now it is ready for a customer to use. Hope you found that helpful. If you did, thumbs up, comment with any questions, and the link to this detail is in the description below.